Hey guys, my name is Mark from Jazz Guitar Lessons and welcome to this video on where we will take our typical shells and make them into what I would call super shells. So this sort of whole vocabulary that can be found in some Ted Green stuff, some Lenny Bro stuff as well, and uh, the late uh, Barry Galbraith, Ed Bickert. This is the type of stuff we'll work from. I wanna start from the foundation, which I've published videos, link here or here, about how to play around and get these staple voicings in your playing. So we will start with this and then move around the different strings with the same chords for a totally different effect and for additional extensions and, and different chord tones on top. So let's start with a basic 2 5 one of G major. Of course, we'll put this on the screen. So A minor seven would be like this, D nine or D seven sharp nine or flat nine, right? Followed by, a, I like to play G six or G six nine. So if you go back to the, these other videos, what I show is, well, let's start by having this chord vocabulary for jazz guitarists as a beginner, you want your root on the sixth string or fifth string, and you wanna keep playing through the progressions like this so that the root motion is pretty obvious. You don't have to break your head with inversions and extensions and like odd fingerings. And it does, my, my method, my, my pedagogy method is to keep the third and the seventh on strings D and G. Namely, if we were to play through autumn leaves now, so two, five, one in the key of G major, followed by C, so D, right? I could comp with just the two notes, the third and seventh without the root, that's in the shells video lesson found here. One, two, got three, four. And I can perfectly describe the chord with just two notes. So this is used in comping, this is used while you want to do the making the changes, uh, voice leading, this is used when you want to solo and have your target notes in the proper place, it has multiple uses. If you haven't done this, I highly recommend you pause and go do that. If you don't, it's fine, you'll just uncover a whole bunch of fun things in this video. But you've been warned that this is more intermediate stuff where we'll start to move around. So in this case, our 2 5 one, the key of G major has a D7 as our five chord. So what I like to do is think of it like the root is here, the third is here, and the seven is here. So it's an F sharp and a C. So here's where we start for this today, for this video, and I have two tricks for you. Number one, I like to see what extensions I can build on the top strings, meaning if it's a D and I want a nine, so that's a D7 chord, the root is implied, it's assumed. I'll play third, seventh, and then ninth, and then fifth, so I can play like this. That's my root, that's a D, it's here, right? So that's the full chord. Where do we go from here? We go one string towards the ceiling. And this is called the magic of string transference. You can see this blog post as well, here that I post on a website a while back. And the whole idea is to find the same notes, namely F sharp, C, E, and A, and go to the next set of strings. So starting with the fifth or the A string and go F sharp, C, E, and A. Do you see the shape? Some of you guys go, Mark, you're playing an F sharp minor seven flat five. It's like, yes, it is. But the context will dictate. If I play this while the song is playing on a D7 chord or my bass player is playing a D root, this will sound like a D9 chord. Aha. Let's break it down further. If I go back to just my shell, F sharp and C, I have these two notes. Right. So these two notes here mean that everything I would want to do here, for instance, I'm a big fan of the sharp nine, in case you haven't noticed, so I have three, seven, nine, and then sharp nine. I'll go like, okay, so I can have, huh, here's a sharp nine. When's the last time you thought of playing a sharp nine chord and went, probably never if you're watching this, which is tremendous. So the job now of your shell, instead of being Let's put them on the circle numbers on the screen because that's how classical guitarists notate it, right? So it would be four and three. Four or three with a big circle around it. F sharp and C. Now we still have F sharp and C, but it's F sharp and C. It's five, four, which has the purpose of liberating more top strings for my extensions and craziness. My sharp nine, my flat nine, my flat 13. So let me give you a couple of really handy examples. Uh, the one I, I like the most, of course, is this one, which is the same notes as F sharp minor seven flat five I told you earlier, which is a D9, okay? And then the, the other one that I really like to do is change that A note to a D note. So you guys probably know this shape from here, which is a 13, but then I have the 13 on the next string. I'm not gonna go and play the top string yet, 
but you could if you wanted. And I'll just give you one more for the road. How about this one? Two fingers. Whew, I love that one. This is a D7 sharp nine, and the fifth is on top. I love it. It's just two fingers. Look at that. It's so awesome. So all the stuff we could do here on the top string, now we could do it down. So benefits is it while you're comping, you don't have to escape and go all the way down here. While you're doing chord melody, maybe some melody notes will be more accessible on your top strings. So this is string transference going from, again, from 4-3 to 5-4 to keep the same shell. Yes, you could do it for the entire 2-5-1. I'm not going to do it right now. You could do it for the 1, you can do it for any other chord. Think of the shells in the middle of the guitar as a beginner. And once you get bored with this, go, hmm, maybe I could put that shell on the bottom strings, even if I don't have any root accessible, unless you have a seven string guitar coming up soon, soon on this channel. You don't have the root, you're like, fine, I'm just gonna play these two notes, it's a third and seven, it's perfectly chord defining. Of course, it entails that you gotta know your fretboard and there's plenty of stuff you gotta know before that. Uh, if you're interested in getting one-on-one -on -one coaching so we can dig into you're playing, get a custom plan, get the one-on-ones, your feedback on your assignments, and making sure that you are making progress, which is at the heart and center of my program. Book a call in the description below. I work with a close group of students, and it's called the Jazz Guitar Accelerator. Of course, book a call solely free of charge. I'll see if I can help you. And if I can't, I'll be super transparent, and I'll, of course, recommend other resources for you. Uh, that said, that's one of the ways to move your shells. The second way implies a trickier thing. So I'll stand up because I want to show you the guitar for this. Okay, if we go back to our D7, we can play it as a D13 like this, right? So D13 has three notes here, so the seventh, the third, and the thirteen. If we take these two, and instead of bringing them down here, or going over here, an octave down, what, what I want to do instead is separate them by a string. So my question would be, well, if I keep the C here, that F sharp note, can I play it somewhere else? And the answer is yes, I can play it here. So instead of this, I'm going to play it here. So this becomes that. So it means that now I've effectively liberated the G string. What happens on that string? I can put the ninth on it. Aha! So now we're getting in the Ed Baker, Lenny Bro realm of, you know, post Joe Pass harmony, if you will. Check this out. So you play your C, you play your F sharp, so you have your tritone, you have the third and the seventh, and your ninth will be here. Haha, <laughs> look at that. I'm gonna play the root with my third finger, pinky on C, and second finger on ninth, and then index on third. You want your 13? It's free. You want it suspended? It's free. Back to 13. So versus that, versus that, is going to find notes behind your fingers, meaning the second finger root are important, third finger root are important because there's a beauty behind here instead of being stuck in the bar chord. So I have this note and then every note I want to find is above on the fretboard. It's not necessary. So what we have is this beautiful second. So this is the seventh note of the scale, this is the ninth, and this is the third. So you get... It's a pretty cool chord, I love that chord. Okay? You want a flat nine? It's right there. Flat nine and 13, okay? So what we did, instead of having like this, we switched it like that, and then we used our other finger to do that. On that note, that's it for this lesson. Now, this goes way, way further. Again, if you want to book a call for the Jazz Guitar Accelerator, check the link in the description here or here, or head over to jazzguitarlessons.net and click book a call. Um, I will just end with a bit of an example on how to use these different things in context. There's not going to be a transcription. I'm just going to play uh, a chord. That's unprepared, by the way. I never thought I could, I could just uh, jump like that. So I'm going to do blues in uh, the key of D, and let me uh, spruce up the metronome just for for clarity's sake, okay, not too fast. Yeah, a good like meaty 126 slow sort of blues and I'll try to uh, use some of these chords. Uh, even switch my pick for better grip. Off we go. I'll play and let you go after. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, this is totally free of charge, of course. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Blues and D. A one, a two, a one, two.
watching guys sorry for all the, the little mistakes I'll see you soon